All right, everyone, it's time to have a little bit of fun. We're with Dave Damashek, who is the host of the Dave Damashek Football Podcast, DDFP. Go find it on iTunes or wherever you download your podcast, wherever you listen to the Wobcast. That's my podcast, by the way. It's very Go good. find it. No, thank you. <laughs> thank you. So we're in his studio. Is this your chair, by the way? Am I in your chair? No, no, I'm in okay, my chair. You're, okay, you're why good. Would I, why would right. I... Good. What, what kind of host do you think I am? I would I would give you my chair. I'm not that no. guy. I don't like it when people have pe guests in from out of town and then they give the guests the big bed and then they go sleep on the couch. That's yeah. too far. Well, I think if I was in your chair though, you you would let me know. Yes. Yeah. And and by the way, I'm just foretelling now you're on the couch tonight. Okay. <laughs> okay. It sounds good. I'm I'm used to I'm having to sleep my on the couch. Bed. Thank you. Um, so this is pretty cool for us because we follow and listen and watch and we're in your studio. Thanks for having us. Certainly, welcome, welcome, Studio 66. Yeah, um, Adam Thielen is still off limits. You cannot have him. I know that you'd like him on your team, but I you think cannot he would, have him. I think he would, uh, listen, beggars can't be choosers. As a Steelers fan, if you want to give us Stefan Diggs, we'll take him no, too. Matter no. of fact, Kyle Rudolph is more than welcome no. to wear black and gold in 2019. No, those guys are ours. Who are um, you to tell me? Oh, you're, you're telling me you want to make deals and then uh, before we get going and now all of a sudden I'm throwing out some viable names and you're shooting them all those, down. Those are not viable names. Those are names that we need and we're going to keep them because it's going right. to get us to the Super Bowl, maybe to play your team. Would you like that? Another Vikings Steelers Super Bowl? I'm okay. down for that noise, yeah. That would be all good right. with me. So when you look at the NFC and what would have to happen for that, what what's, what's missing for the Vikings? What needs to be adjusted for the Vikings, do you think? Well, if you, off the top of my head, as I start running through that, who was the juggernaut last year? It was the Rams and I guess the Saints that ended up with the number one seed. So, um, got to tip your hat to them too. I think the Rams slide back a little bit. Um, the Saints could be good, but one thing that people always kind of sleep on until it's too late to do anything about is just because Tom Brady won the Super Bowl, there's still, even with Tom Brady, there's precious little evidence that you can play well that uh, at that age. Drew Brees, for all we know, and in fact, if you watched him play in December and January, he looked like he fell back a little bit by the end of the year. I'm trying to tick through all the teams, all the would-be contenders. Um, I think the most dangerous teams off the top of my head happen to be in the NFC North. It's a pretty good division. I mean, I yeah. you know, I think the new look Packers with the guy who remains the most talented, quarterback in football that I've ever seen. I suspect they'll have a bounce back. I think they've uh, they've um, built up the defense a little bit. And, and, and so I think the Packers are going to be rejuvenated. I think the Bears are scary. We'll see what happens with Trubisky. I think he has to take it to another level for them to get mm -hmm. to be uh, juggernaut level. But we know what that defense is. Um, you know, I I think that the... the um, thing that everybody talked about, especially in the second half of last season, was Kirk Cousins' performance. You know, that is, there's a difference between that guy is good and, you know, he's a little underrated versus here's $30 million. And because we're giving you that percentage um, of the salary cap, you must obscure other um, shortcomings on the roster. There aren't that many guys that can effectively do that for 16 right. games. Is Kirk Cousins in a spot to do that? I think he is, um, but they, I, I think it starts with the offensive line. I know people yeah. say that all the time. It's mm -hmm. not a sexy or fun thing to talk about, but Cousins strikes me as one of those guys, like most human beings, even the ones that are good at quarterback, who needs to be kept relatively clean to be effective. Yeah, but you'll appreciate this. You know, Minnesotans, they actually like talking about offensive line and like drafting mm. offensive linemen. Like they're kind of into that. This fan that's base likes that. You know? Yeah, but that's because offensive linemen tend to look a lot like your logo. <laughs> yeah, okay. Hardy, yeah. strong. But yeah. also, I, I dare say, I, again, I don't Facial know this. Hair. You can fact check this, but I think he is the most intimidating uh, flaxen-haired mascot in sports. Yeah. Is that true? I mean, how many blondes are there? Not not a lot, right? No. I mean, so, yeah, definitely number one. But even if there were a lot, I think Norseman would be uh, would be pretty intimidating. And, stack and he's up got that anybody. he's got that big Fu Manchu. Ooh, intimidating. Also, ironically, given the fact that he has a braided ponytail. You wouldn't, again, right. a right. braided ponytail doesn't, off the top but of your head, is... you don't think, like, intimidating, but he is. But if you're secure with that, obviously you, you have reason to be, like, he's secure with that. I mean, he doesn't have any problem 
having that look because he knows you know, his identity and he knows that he is an intimidating person. Could he, I mean, just start elementary with the thinking and then we'll go out from there in the NFC North. Would he be, it's a packer, it's a meat packer, right? Mm -hmm. Well, obviously a Viking would defeat a meat packer. Correct. Easy, right. easy. You have to tame lions and bears. What if a lion, so I, so if we arranged it so on one side of the bracket it was humans, you have an easy one in the first round. Yes. You make quick work of, of the meat Almost kind of like a buy. Yeah. Right, kind of. Mm -hmm. But then the, the lion well, the, and bear, well, one of them will eliminate the other. Well, the, the lion is winning. The lion beats a bear? Yes, the lion is the king of the jungle. That's what they say, but that's maybe because bears don't live in the jungle. But the lion is the lion is the king of the jungle, not just the king of the jungle. The lion is the king of the animal. Kingdom. Yeah, but you're well. Now you see. I, I don't know about that. No one ever told me that the lion's the king of all animals. That. No, I learned that. It is. Top, yeah, you did, and that's you know chain. what? That's what a powerful brand marketing person can do for you. You're being seduced by what they want you to believe. Big lion is telling you that that's the case. What about no. bear? Can I tell you? Maybe it's, um, I'm getting excited for Game of Thrones. I don't know, but I'd love to see a Viking fight either a bear or a lion. Yeah. Either one, I'm in that for. That would be pretty cool. Let me know. We can make that happen. Maybe can we to, really? Well, maybe you come to Minnesota. I don't think, I don't think they're gonna let, I think if you announced like, hey, show up everybody, we're dropping a live Viking into the lion's den at the no, zoo. But we're not gonna announce it though. Oh no, we just do it. Okay. Yeah, then we can actually get it done. There's, <laughs> there's another thing that you would like to adjust about our team, I understand. And it's our face mask on our head. Well, you have wonderful uniforms, you know? I mean, they're- You're into uniforms. I love, I love uniforms. And um, the Vikings of my youth, yes, it always bothered me a little bit that the helmet didn't match the jersey that well. That said, the white face mask on that purple hat looks so good. And I don't know who made the decision and I don't want to disparage anybody in particular, but <laughs> the black face mask is 180 degrees of where you need to be. Okay. So Look how cool it is. Do it for Tommy Kramer and Sammy White and Ahmad Rashad so and Chuck Foreman and all, right. all the greats. So you like it for the throwback nature. You don't no, like, I like it because it's modern. No, I like it aesthetically as well. Okay. I, it doesn't have to do with uh, nostalgia. So you're cool with the uniforms, yes. you're cool with the helmet, sans the black face mask, yes. turn that into a white face mask. The white face mask, also the numbers, I don't love them, but okay. That, uh, you can keep the numbers if you give me the white face mask. The numbers are a little weird. I don't think fine. the numbers are changing. You don't like the, the little flares. What are those called, the little flares on the end? I always assume like that they're like the points of the Viking's hat. Yeah. The other thing that I think we sort of can converge on and have the same opinion of is, you know, you're a Pittsburgh native. So I kind of want to just tee this up for you because the people watching and listening are going to love it. What are your thoughts on Philadelphia? Well, Philadelphia is fine, you know, good for them. They won a Super Bowl a couple of years ago and, mm -hmm. uh, and they went crazy for it because, uh, you know, a little bit of success in the desert, you know, just a drip of water in, in the desert is very satisfying. Right. We on the banks of the Three Rivers have higher goals, you know, we, we expect championships. Yes, make your jokes about the baseball team there, but nevertheless, the hockey team and the football team have more than made up for that over the course of my lifetime. Philadelphia is a little bit bigger, a little bit dirtier, a little bit nastier mm -hmm. than, uh, than uh, Pittsburgh, which on a number of occasions in the last couple of decades has been named America's most livable city. By Not just by me. By who? Now who's making stuff up? Bubby Brister. <laughs> no, by, by like people who evaluate those things. I don't know. Okay, uh -huh. Rand McNally. I don't uh -huh, know who do, right. who, the, who the ones that do that. Uh, uh -huh. it you're the like... one going with lying because you some you heard that in a cartoon, and then you're giving me the business for telling you Pittsburgh's yeah. delightful. So you're on Pittsburgh's the most livable city in the world, and I'm on. I didn't say world. I oh. said country. All right. All right. So thanks everyone for watching. Make sure. Oh you wait, check I have out one Dave's more stuff. thing. What? I, you said if we're fixing the Vikings. Oh yeah. The on-field product is very good. Mm -hmm. Bounce here, bounce there. You guys could very well be in the Super Bowl. I wish you nothing but the best. Kirk Cousins is a delight. Stephon Diggs is a rare delight. I mean, okay. especially for wide receivers. What okay. a great fella. I sense a butt coming. Kyle Rudolph, because I, I, the only reason I bring it up is because I've talked with all of them about it. And I'm going to tell you now, you need to rip that dome off. It's oh. a beautiful stadium. But don't you see, you're in the NFC North. You don't play under a dome. 
Why give up your home field advantage? Especially. I just went over at the top. The Saints, the Rams, the Falcons are good. The Cowboys might be good. These teams would have a decided disadvantage if they have to come up there and play in the frigid temperature. Don't you see that? Yeah, and maybe now, I mean, now that we got the Super Bowl, we could sort of, you know, pull the bait and switch. Like, because I think that was part of getting a Super Bowl in oh, Minnesota was you, yeah, you right. kind of had to have a roof on, yeah, the, I get on it. the place. And but that's coming, gone. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. All right. Or just oh. like take it off and then hold it off on the side but, until the another Super Bowl. But here's the problem on. is it's sort of a defining feature of the building is the ETFE clear roof. But that's I don't know sort what of, any of that means. But I, I, right. I'm just telling you, <laughs> do yourselves a favor. Dude, have the but we dignity have the doors. to be in the NFC North. But the door is open. We can open the, the pivoting glass doors, the largest the same pivoting with glass the doors in the world. The, the cold and all of it. All right, just think it over. At least the white face mask. Okay, we'll think all those things over. Thanks for your time, man. Thanks for having us here. Thank you. Yep.